I am Anthony from Hazardsnut, and on Sunday, June 28th, 2020, Masako X participated in a charity question and answer live stream with me. If you do not know who Masako X is, he is a voice actor best known as a member of the Team Four Star YouTube channel. He currently hosts his own YouTube channel, Masako Extreme, where he creates stories based upon the Dragon Ball franchise. What you are about to see is part of the Q&A live stream. Due to a technological issue, Masako X was unable to participate via webcam, but was able to participate via voice chat. In advance, thanks for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe. Okay, so... I, I, we have a question here. It says, uh, uh, what if there was a Frieza Black s or slash a Frieza Black Saga? Oh, so basically, is that instead of... Okay, I mean, I could see the parallel with, like, Goku versus Frieza instead of a Goku Black thing. It'd be a very interesting thing and a scenario, like how... Like, maybe Zamasu would say, instead of pitting you against yourself, you'll pit I pit you against your greatest enemy. But I feel like at the same time, it would be totally intriguing. But given the fact that we basically have Resurrection F, that saga, and the saga in Super didn't go down too well, you feel like, uh, really? That didn't go down too well. You're experiencing fatigue with Frieza, and when Frieza was confirmed for the Tournament of Power, there was a collective groan amongst the fandom, and you feel like, oh, uh, really? So there was that groan, so, and that was after like a year of absence from Frieza. So if you basically had him in the next arc and it's the Frieza Black saga, you feel like, yeah, okay, hold up, Toei. You're over-egging the pudding here. Like, stop. It's time to stop. So you feel like that would have been overly excessive, but thematically, I can see some sort of appeal in that sense. Okay, so Dog 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 777 has a question. It says, what were your thoughts uh, when the Elder Kai used the Parteras to fuse with the Witch? Now, if I remember correctly, uh, the Witch actually grabbed a ring, uh, the earring and put it on her ear, so it was not on purpose. Oh, no, 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 no. The, no, the Elder Kai didn't do that. He was basically, he basically got tricked in it. He got hoodwinked into that. So the Witch basically fused with the, uh, with the Elder Kai, who was the Supreme Kai. So basically, she had an earring on. He, she put an earring on him. And then basically they fuse together. But at the same time, she didn't then take into account how Pataras work. And basically, Patara fusions don't necessarily do the whole double voice thing and double personality. It's whoever has the dominant personality reigns supreme. That's why Kibito Kai didn't have a double voice. Because Kibito's personality was vastly superseded by Shin. So the Supreme Kai, that was his personality just fused into Kibito Kai. So, you get that. And with the Elder Kai, it was the same thing. The Elder Kai was a higher being, had a higher personality, higher brain capacity. So therefore, Elder Kai kept his same personality and brain. He was the dominant personality, but he had the appearance of being older than he actually is. So, and with the Vegito. Vegito, basically Goku and Vegeta have similarly warring personalities and relatively equal, so therefore, double voice. Okay, so Zekin1000 asks, uh, what do you think Toriyama's, not Toriyato's, uh, next Dragon Ball story is going to be about? Because in 2018 Jump Fest, um, Masako uh, Nozawa did say she hoped yeah. she could be part of Toriyama's next project. Um... I don't know about that really. She's very, very engaged with like you know what's going on with the whole situation, and they do talk at, at great lengths um, at what you know they do like do loads of good interviews together. But so they do have a very common, uh, and that would make sense really because she is Goku, and Toriyama would want her opinion because she's been voicing the character for nearly. Four years. So I feel like they would. Pro she probably does have a lot of input because whenever they announce something. Dragon Ball related. They are very quick to confirm who is the producer, and yes, Masako Nozawa is working in it. So they are very quick to say that she is the first, like the first confirmation in any project. Okay, so um, just to follow up on uh, one previous question, Dog 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 Seven 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 says, D 
does this mean that uh, the Elder Kai is she male, or perhaps uh, the the opposite, whatever that would be? Um, do you think that either the the dominant gender took over, or and this is a little, um, I mean, because you can, you obviously can't know. So like, well, I think I can tell you that. I can confirm. I can tell you this because. Oh, okay. The Supreme, well, Supreme Kai's Rasa do not have any gender. They are basically born from the Great Kai Tree. They are fruit people. They are genderless. They're, well, they're fruit. That's what they are. They're fruit. They're basically they they are they are born from a great tree, and it's the Great Kai. It's the Great Kai Tree, and basically they are born. They all the people that are live on the sacred world of the Kai's are born from that tree, and depending on the quality of the fruit, you are either a common person like Kibito, the attendant to Shin. You are either a Kai, like King Kai, or one of the Compass Kais, or you are one of the the Golden Fruit, a Shinjin, you, which can live for, on average, 75,000 years, and potentially could become a Supreme Kai. So, Shin is the last one to be born from that tree, who is complete in the Universe 7 that can be considered a Supreme Kai. And Elder Kai was the same. So, essentially, with the Elder Kai being the dominant personality, the Elder Kai is genderless. He is, he, he's, he's, he is a, a walking, talking piece of fruit. Okay, so Caleb NJ4 asks, uh, how would you handle a what if Tarble wasn't abandoned? Um, oh, we talk about this quite a lot often, actually. And basically the way we would do it is Group. like he basically would be working in with Bulma and he'd be one of those people king and stuff like that legit he'd be like one of the backroom people helping Bulma he'd be that kind of person in any kind of movie he'd be like type 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 on the keyboard I'm in like that kind of stuff <laughs> he'd be a hacker he'd be one of those hacker people he'd basically be like Tank and Dozer uh, Tank and Dozer in the Matrix movies okay so he'd be like, <laughs> operator Okay, so Zekin1000 asks, um, do you think GT will ever be canonized? Although, that brings me to a video, I, because I, I posed that question in a video to you. Basically, how I think they could incorporate GT's story into Super, or whatever the new, next series would be. Uh, basically, drop it, because you kind of have to drop a couple of parts of it, especially that long-winded, you know, early opening. Uh, but do you, do you think there's any chance of any of it getting canonized? And then question two from Zekin is, uh, do you think there would ever be uh, a new Super Saiyan form if the show returns? Um, well, I don't think in the moral arc we're going to get a Super Saiyan form. Say, Ultra Instinct is pretty much the highest you can go. Because, I mean, that even Ultra Instinct then... is basically a god form, so where else is there? That, that, it's like the that, highest that, level. Yeah. Like, Beerus can get to that level if he really wanted to. You, can you go yeah. higher than even that? That's so weird, right? Like, I don't think, I don't think you can. It's all about how you learn it. And the inter the, the interesting thing is with the Ultra Instinct, anybody can get it as long as they do Ultra in yeah, all, do the training. So Gohan can get it. Krillin could get it if he trained properly. Um, but in terms of Super Saiyan transformations, not necessarily. But in terms of the GT stuff, I don't think so. Basically, then, but at the same time, Toei's never going to go flat out saying. GT is irrelevant. They would never say that because in Japan it still makes money. Elements from GT still make money. Baby is still very popular. Super Saiyan 4, incredibly popular. That's that why they still release toys. Yeah, it makes a lot of money. So basically the best thing to do is to milk the nostalgia of Super Saiyan 4 and Baby and all that stuff. Even the Shadow Dragon. Make them into cards, include them in games, include that because it's part of the show's overall lore, even if it's not part of the main timeline of Super. You just need to do that and keep it to Super Heroes, and there you go. In fact, curiously enough, in, the, in said Heroes, there are rumors that Zeno, Goku, and Vegeta have these Limit Breaker Super Saiyan 4 form, so they're able to go beyond that. Is it Super Saiyan 5? Hard to say. But they're able to find a newer level of Super Saiyan 4. So, in terms of that, GT in itself will not become its own thing, nor will certain things become part of Super. 
but it still will be part of the franchise going forward. Okay, so Caleb uh, asks, um, what if uh, Dragon Ball Super Bulma created the machine to go to different dimensions like in GT? Now, I actually yeah. don't remember that, but you know, go ahead. Well, I mean, to be honest, it'd be just like an advanced version of the time machine. But at the same time, Beerus, he should be playing very, he should be high regarding Beerus, who basically is flat out said, I do not want you creating time machines. If you do, there will be hell to pay. So, you know, she's on thin ice with Beerus in that regard, despite providing him good food. But say, for example, if they did do that, that is one way they could do it, because I think that's the best thing that they do say with GT in the games, that, oh, it's an alternate dimension, not like a universe. It's a different dimension where certain other things did happen. That is the way they do try to explain GT. That is just like a variation rather than part of the actual timeline. I was like, did I lose you? You just kind of stopped and you might have answered the question. I... Yeah, you know, I answered the question. Okay. So, uh, what if Captain Ginyu was truly evil at, with his body switch powers? Like, okay, first off, if I was Captain Ginyu, I would have said, Jage now! And then taken Frieza's body. What the hell, right? But what what havoc could you see Captain Ginyu get into? This question's from Caleb. Okay, well, basically, um, there is a thing called King Cold. There is a thing called King Cold. So, yeah, granted, he takes Frieza's body. Uh, he doesn't know that... He doesn't know that Frieza can transform. So he'd be like, yeah, okay, he has Frieza's first form body. Granted, yeah. But it's like, and then basically Frieza and Ginyu's body say, well, that, it's like, well, that's very good, Captain Ginyu. But do you know to transform? I, I what? I can transform? Well, no, you can't because you don't know how. So basically, he's stuck in first form, really. And then basically, yeah. And then they find out, and the rest of the Ginyu force then inform King Cold. It's like, oh no, the Ketten's gone rogue! And then King Cold comes to the net planet Nemec and goes, What have you done to my baby boy? So, basically, there is King Cold to take into account there. Because, yeah, granted, Freeze is pretty strong, but King Cold's even stronger. So you're basically saying he could he could try to take over the most powerful person, but he, just, he won't be able to use their power to the fullest. Yeah, exactly. That's the same thing that happened with Goku. It's like, yeah, he takes over Goku's body, but can only access like a certain amount of his power because he doesn't know how. That's the that was the kind of the uh, the factor of diminishing returns with Goku. Uh, so, so Caleb also asked, what if Piccolo had acquired the God Form? Um, yeah. Uh, if Piccolo acquired the God Form, the thing is though, there isn't necessarily a factor into the Super Saiyan God Form, but. It's very interesting with the whole idea of Zalama, the guy who created Super Shenron and the Super Dragon Ball. He was originally allegedly meant to be the first Namekian, and all Namekians born from that are from him are de are descended from Zalama. So basically, what would be really interesting is if Go if Piccolo was able to fuse with enough Namekians to be able to have some kind of connection to Zalama. So therefore, because nobody knows where Zalama, because essentially. The theory goes is that the original, um, it's basically Zalama, the Grand Priest, and Zeno are the three divine beings who set up the multiverse. And basically, the GP is the one of balance, basically like the angels. Zeno is the one of destruction because he can erase things. And then Zalama was the god, the pure god of the original god of creation, basically creating the Dragon Balls, creating people. And therefore, nobody knows where Zalama's gone. So basically, it's my own personal theory that uh, he was trapped in one of the universes that was erased by Zeno because he erased six uni uh, universes whim. So you feel like, was there some kind of conspiracy to get rid of Zolomer? And the only thing that is left of him is locked within the Super Dragon Ball and therefore within Super Shenron. So you feel like there is a really interesting theory. And it was one of my earlier theories, I think was somewhere to tap into Zalama and therefore control Goku's body and therefore be able to get his revenge on Zeno. That was my theory. Okay. Okay, so um, it's about time for a puppy check. How's the puppy? Uh, puppy check, she is now in her bed and attacking a cardboard tube. I think my time may be limited here because... 
basically, I think I've got maybe about like five more minutes before I have to basically get her get her dinner ready. Okay, so we'll ask one more question, and then this is from first off, let me, uh, dog 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 seven 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 responded. Frieza never transforms in front of Ginyu, so obviously he would not have ever known about it. So you make a good point. And then yeah, exactly. Caleb asks... Very few people know about transformations. Yeah. And then Caleb asks, oh, what if Android 21 from Dragon Ball Fighters was canon? Although they kind of squeezed well, her sort of into... Because aren't they... They kind of squeezed her into to, uh, Kakarot. So are they trying to make her canon? Well, well, she sort of is in a way. It's possible for her to be included because it's meant to be taking place between the Goku and then when Buller is born. So it's like maybe like a, a six months between then and the Tournament of Power. So in terms of that, it does potentially happen in that segment. So they could easily make Android 21 into that. The trouble is, though, is that she's really more aimed at games. And also Android 21, I hate to say it, but she is not appropriate for Dragon Ball. She is really not. Not for the main series, because her characterization, I mean, for, any, for an average anime, perfectly acceptable but she's incredibly thirsty and like really portrayed in this way which is incredibly weird for this show and especially considering the fact that it would have been fine for the days of dragon ball z because dragon wednesday show so basically she was like fit and appropriate for then because it's meant to be for teens but it's a kids show now it's on at 9 30 in the morning with one piece so there's only so far you can go in terms of you know gore things happening you don't see blood in super so you really need to play it very safe and the characterization of 21 is like overly sexualized it's just way too much so you feel like with the games that's kind of where they need to do if not they really need to kind of change the characterization to the point where she may not be recognizable to the fans of her already in the game so okay, you gotta be very so, careful with that yeah so uh well uh, this is the last question this is from yash but gary uh hopefully i pronounced it correctly uh so, oh, yeah, yeah 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 okay so they have a theory it says um i'd like to think that when future trunks went back there's air quotes uh, after the Goku Black arc, he was interrupted by Corona, uh, Corona, uh, oh yeah, the, 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 the Kai of time. Yeah. And joined the time patrol. Then when the tournament of power happened, universes one to 18 were brought back leading to the demon realms and, or the may K, uh, it was like, a, yes, thank yeah. you to exist causing a literal Xenoverse saga. Uh, it could take place whenever and it might make everything canon just a theory though so basically no. I, I, if i understand the question correctly basically trying to find an event that creates basically um what is that the flashpoint yeah to make xenoverse a thing and to be honest that's the best thing that could happen to trunks right now because at the end of the goku black arc he basically was like trunks was then like his entire thing that he was fighting for z was destroyed erased right in front of him he's like got nothing now and the best thing that we can offer is like oh you can go to a different dimension where you and all of you have fun with that and i'm like that is terrible for trunks that is a terrible ending for him so the best thing that you can do and i do a what if this what if trunks and my stayed in the past and what i do in that is that i have the supreme kai of time show up and that is the flashpoint where he then goes to become time patrol trunks and have some sense of purpose and there you thought you get Toki Toki City, you get the whole thing in Xenoverse happening, and basically Kronoa, instead of punishing him, making him actually atone for what he's done with time to help fix it. So he gives him a purpose, and therefore an actual home, whereas not, not having to share a world with a different Trunks and Mai. Okay, so uh, you have to go, and um, so I'd like to thank everybody for the questions. Thanks to Masako X. Um, for, for doing this today, uh, there was a little bit of confusion up front, but uh, then he ended up having to be off site, so this was the best option. And um, uh, you have any last words for the audience? Well, as a certain person would always say, when you fall off that horse, you get back up and you eat that horse. <laughs> it's a great way to end. Okay. <laughs> uh, alrighty. 
So, uh, again, thank you all. Thank you for Masako X. And uh, thank you all for watching. Goodbye. Thank you for checking out our content. Before you leave, please remember to click like and then subscribe. If you want to receive notifications, do not forget to enable them by clicking on the bell. Then afterwards, check out our social media at Hasledgenet and our website at hasledge.net.